guys welcome back to my channel I, <laughs> I feel like I need a new introduction do y'all get tired of hearing me say that I don't know anyway um so today I wanted to sit and talk to you guys about what I'm gonna be growing this spring um, I know that in a lot of places y'all are we are kind of in that in-between state in gardening so we're not really doing too much the garden at least mine is in its ugly duckling phase and we're just dreaming about the tomatoes and the cucumbers and everything that's going to be happening in just a few months so i thought it would be fun to sit and just let you guys know what i'm growing so i've already started my tomato seeds my pepper seeds some herb seeds and just a bunch of things that i'll be probably planting out late next month so our last frost date is february 16th and so you want to start a lot of things six to eight weeks before your last frost date so tomatoes peppers eggplants things like that so i'm getting my start now i'm actually kind of late so uh yeah let me show you guys what i'm gonna be growing so i separated everything out and i have um tomatoes peppers herbs and then flowers and so for the tomatoes I am doing the, I guess, I think this is the one that I'm most excited about. It's the Ananasi Ananas Noir tomato. Um, the description says, also known as black pineapple tomato. This variety hails from Belgium and has a lovely tie-dye burgundy red and green interior. Like the colors inside, the flavor is complex with its smoky, acidic, and sweet flavor profile. That sounds really good to me. I've never had a smoky tomato, so I'm excited to try. Um, this year, I really wanna try to grow slicers. I've never, well, I guess in December, I did have a few kind of smaller slicers, but this year I wanna have like some thick tomatoes, like some thick fatties and <laughs> that I can use to like make fried uh, green tomatoes or like tomato sandwiches, you know, um, stuff like that i'm really excited to do that i also want to can of a lot of sauce and tomato paste and things like that so those are kind of my goals with this harvest um the next variety i'm growing is the tomato green giant i don't know if you can see that um this one says and i'm not going to read all of these just the ones i'm really excited about <laughs> um this one says, most productive, best tasting tomato in our trials. Large, one pound, emerald green fruit, sweet and juicy. That sounds good to me. Um, of course, I'm doing the famous sun gold tomato. I am growing ground cherries again. I love ground cherries and I will always have ground cherries in my garden. This year, I would really love to grow more just be, just so I can have like a lot of harvest because I found that I was just kind of like picking a few every time I would go out to the garden but I, I really just want to have like a container of brown cherries like every few days so I don't know how many plants I would need to, to make that happen but I definitely have to be vigilant about it because last year I had six plants and they were producing really well and then um they were overtaken actually most of my garden was overtaken with squash bugs so not squash bugs, um, leaf-footed bugs, so the stink bugs. I didn't recognize like the little orange babies on my plants until it was too late and they just killed everything. Uh, so the next variety, I'm doing the uh, Cherokee Purple Tomato. This is a uh, um, classic heirloom variety. Everybody knows it. And then the Dr. Wichie's, Dr. Witchie's Tomato. I'm growing this one because, again, I was influenced. Uh, Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm, she talked about how good this tomato was. So, of course, I had to try it. Um, this one, and I also love yellow. So, you know, I like I like that I'm going to have, like, a variety of colors in my garden. So, um, this one says, this tomato has been a long-standing heirloom favorite for not only the name, but also the flavor. The tomato is low acid, rich in flavor, and is a stunning meaty beefsteak variety. That sounds attractive. Um, of course, I'm doing the black cherry tomato again. I really enjoyed this one last year. Uh, I'm gonna do the Paul Robeson tomato, which is apparently another very popular um, tomato. This one says, the world famous variety, no, this world famous variety is prized for its dynamic flavor and eye-catching color. 
a slightly flattened beefsteak variety with a smoky earthy flavor another smoky variety and the color is really cool you can see it has kind of the dark shoulders and then it's red at the bottom and then doing the black brandywine tomato this one says extra large fruit full of deep earthy sweet flavor that makes black tomato so popular i've never had a black tomato so excited about that uh, these purple tomatillos. So this seed is from 2019. I bought these during my very first garden. It almost looks kind of kind of fake, like one of those things you see like in Google Shopping when you're looking for seeds, you see those fake things. Um, I don't know that they'll germinate, but I did start some, and we'll see how they go. Um, I would rather like try to grow the the seeds instead of just throwing them out because they're old. Because you never know. Um, these spoon tomatoes. I got these free with a Baker Creek seed order. I don't know that I'm gonna grow them, but I got them. So mm, to be honest, I'm not that I'm not that concerned about it. So those are the tomatoes. The peppers are next. I want to make hot sauce this year and I also want to grow a bunch of bell peppers because I use them a lot in cooking. So we use something called the Trinity down here in the South. So it's um, bell peppers, onions, and celery and sometimes you'll put garlic and parsley in it, in it as well and so i really hate cutting it up every time i get ready to cook so i want to kind of do like my grandma does and cut it up in advance so i can just pull it out of the freezer and use it when i when i need it and i think that'll help with you know cooking <laughs> next year so of course i'm doing the og california wonder bell pepper i'm doing the Bikin, Bikino yellow piquillo pepper. These are native to Brazil. These brightly colored pointed fruits have a tart flavor with a slight smoky heat. These peppers can be eaten raw or cooked but are usually pickled to bring out their flavor tanginess. So I love pickled peppers. That's another thing I want to do this year. I want to grow a bunch of peppers to pickle them because I like to eat them just out of the jar. I like to put them on sandwiches. I love pickled peppers. I love spicy food. I, I'm a pepper freak. Like, I'm surprised I haven't grown more peppers over the years and, like, used them because I need hot sauce in everything I eat. I am a true South Louisiana, South Louisiana girl. I, I need it in my life. So, I'm excited. And I had these before I, when I fell in love with the farm. I was working at a restaurant. We went on a farm tour of, like, the restaurants that, I mean, the farms that our restaurant sourced from. And they were growing these peppers and I could not remember the name because they let us taste them. And they were so good. I loved like that tangy flavor. And so um, when I found them, I was like, oh my God, yes, I have to grow them and I can't wait to pickle them. This is the Chiltepin, Chiltepin pepper. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is the only wild native chili pepper in the US. So that'll be fun. I think this will make a really good hot sauce, so I'm excited to try it. And these um, seeds are from Kitsuzawa Seed, obviously. I ordered a bunch of seeds from In My Garden this year because they had really affordable prices, whereas a lot of other places, you know, for good reason, you know, a lot of human, a lot of labor goes into producing seeds on kind of an organic small scale, so I don't mind paying the cost sometimes, but sometimes I really just need a $2 pack of seeds, you know? Um, I'm growing a serrano pepper. Everyone knows these. They are really good for hot sauce and just putting in spicy food. The Hungarian hot wax pepper. I'm going to pickle these as well. The large red cherry pepper for pickling. The big gym pepper. I think I'm going to use this for hot sauce. Um, it says it has a sweet citrus flavor, which I didn't realize until now, but that sounds really good. I'm gonna, yeah, we'll see how they taste. We'll do it like a pepper taste test when they grow in. The habanada pepper, which I'm really excited about. It is a brightly flavored habanero variety without the heat. Ripens to a sunset orange color, making it a colorful addition to any recipe. Um, wonderful snacking pepper. I don't eat a lot of peppers like for snacks, but this sounds really good. Like I really want to see what that, um, what it like that fruity taste without the heat of a habanero so i'm excited to to try these maybe i'll eat them in salads and stuff but i'm not really one for eating peppers raw but maybe that'll change 
Um, I'm growing shishito peppers. Again, these are a really old seed, but if these don't germinate, I will buy some more shishito seeds because I love shishitos. I like them just, you know, like blistered with some like flaky sea salt. I had them at a restaurant um, this past year for the first time and they were so good. Again, I don't really like cooked peppers like as like just to be eating peppers cooked, like a sauteed pepper, but I really enjoyed those. So I'm excited to grow them. And I have the datil pepper, datil pepper. This one, blazing hot, blunt, little 3.5 inch fruits ripen to a brilliant orange yellow Vicious heat, complex, fruity flavor. I'm growing this one for hot sauce. And then the sugar rush pepper, pe sugar rush peach pepper. <laughs> um, exciting new heirloom bred by hot pepper prodigy, Chris Fowler of Wales. Long peach colored fruits are packed with loads of super sweet tropical flavor and the seeds bring a smoky complex heat. That sounds really good. As something about like the... The tropical, sweet, fruity, hot pepper sounds really good and I'm really interested to, I'm really excited to experiment with hot sauce with that. I'm also growing a scotch bonnet. I only had two seeds left in the pack so I um, tossed that of course. Um, these are kind of an outlier. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to grow artichokes. These I wanna use kind of as a landscaping plant in my front yard. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know how well artichokes do here, but I'm, I'm interested to find out. So for the flowers, as you guys know, I have been obsessed with cut flowers, but due to the lack of planning that I mentioned in my last video, I wasn't able to really act on that. So there are a lot of plants that should have been planted like November, December. So I'm going to try to prepare some beds. I have a plan to build a bunch of beds because as you can see with all the things that I've mentioned thus far, I definitely do not have enough space for all of these things. So I have to build beds. I have to get them ready. Luckily, I have like a month or so <laughs> to prepare all of them and get everything popping. So my first thing that I want to get in the ground are my poppies. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build... Um, two raised beds this weekend and hopefully a few more over the next week so that I can just put those out because it, it's recommended that poppies be direct sowed so I'm gonna um, put those out. I do have some that I'm starting inside just because I need to see for myself if they'll grow uh, if they're transplanted. So flowers. I'm doing the tall deluxe snapdragon. I got these seeds last year. I never grew them. Um, so we'll see if they come up. This one, I do have them started inside. It says days to bloom 55 to 100. That's a big gap. <laughs> so we'll see if they come up. Of course, I'm growing zinnias. These are scarlet flame zinnias. I'm thinking about ordering some more zinnia seeds because I think I want to make them a major part of my front yard landscaping until I really figure out what I want to do up there. This is the Zyre bread seed poppy. And I'm going to try to put some photos in the video as well so you can see for the ones that don't have um, photos on the packet. I'm going to do these salmon asters. Oh, and I wanted to say, so a bread seed poppy is the kind of poppy that actually produces the those big heads with the, um, with the poppy seeds inside. So this one makes a really big um, seed head. So it's filled with... Lavender flowers with large seed heads filled with unusually sweet seeds. I'm doing a Shirley Gray poppy, an Iceland poppy. This one's called Pastel Meadows. The Zeolites Calendula. Wild Cascades Foxglove. Doing a Salmon Zinnia. I love salmon colored flowers. I got these from In My Gardener. Uh, another Bread Seed poppy. I, oh, that's the same packet. I accidentally ordered two of those. Doing a pink butterfly Chinese delphinium, the mignonette flower. Um, I wish I could find the description. I'll put it on the on the screen somewhere um, about these flowers. Um, lupins, which I just I've been meaning to plant these, but I just keep forgetting to soak them. So I'm gonna set these aside and do that tonight. Let me doing the apricot beauty foxglove. Earl Grey Larkspur. These need to be chilled. 
and then the bees friend i'm really excited about these um i'll put the description somewhere on the screen but it said that bees like you can hear an audible buzz from all the bees like you it's wild so i'm excited to see if the bees really if these bring all the bees to the yard um sweet alyssum these are supposed to be good for pest um pest aversion I don't really believe in, I won't say I don't believe in it, but I haven't seen a lot of evidence of flowers reducing pests, but maybe I haven't done it correctly. Maybe I haven't grown enough flowers or interplanted well enough. So I'm interested in trying that. And so these are more flowers slash herbs. A lot of them are culinary herbs, but as an herbalist, I do want to really start a medicinal herb garden this year, I already have some stuff growing. So I have some plantain, I have valerian, I have marshmallow, I have pulsatilla, I think that's how you pronounce it. I have motherwort, I have lemon balm, I have a variety of mints, rosemary, um, nettles, comfrey. Um, I'm looking outside my window at, at my garden so I can see it from my office to see what else I have out here. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and then like, the wood bedney. Um, so I want to definitely grow some more things. But this is borage. And then I'm going to do some dill. I love, I just love dill. I love when it starts to flower, but I also want it for pickling. I'm doing this dark opal basil for flower arrangements. Doing some lemon basil. Broadleaf sage. I like to use this also as an alter alternative alternative to white sage. So it's easy to grow and then you can dry it and burn it and use it in the same manner of white sage for cleansing. Uh, swamp milkweed, I wanna grow a bunch of these. Last year I had monarchs in my garden. I've never had that before that I know of. And they were so beautiful because initially I thought they were like the Gulf fritillary butterflies that we have here. It's a native butterfly in our area. and I was like, oh, no, that's a monarch. It was so beautiful. And so now I'm like, I need all the monarchs in my yard. <laughs> this is the Bloody Mary Nasturtium. I need to start these seeds. Um, they're really beautiful. I've never been interested in growing nasturtiums, but someone mentioned, I don't know if it was a pesto or something that you make with them. And for some reason that time I heard it, it really piqued my interest. So I'm gonna try that. I also am wondering if I can pickle the leaves so like or like pickle the leaves and the flowers kind of like an Asian green like pickled green I'm really interested in that so I think that might be cool to explore and then these jet black hollyhocks oh my god y'all they are so beautiful I am just in love with them and I need I need to I need to I need to grow these so they won't these are biennial, biennial so they likely won't flower until next spring but again we are laying the foundation so um i'm gonna get these started and grow a bunch of these and then i have the majorette double champagne hollyhock and then i'm doing a yellow yarrow oh also i have i have yarrow in the garden as well like the, just the regular white version and i also have calendula um and I'll probably start some more calendula. I also have lemon verbena. I think I think that's it. But these make a really beautiful dried flower. And yeah, they're they're just really beautiful. So I want to do these. I also I feel like I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not. Um, other things that I have started that I don't have the seed packets for here that I can remember are. I'm doing some Monarda, so I want all three varieties that I know of, of bee balm. So Monarda citrodora, Monarda fistulosa, and Monarda didima, didima, I think it is, the spotted one. I, so if there's a red one, a pink one, um, I think I may be missing one variety, but I want all of them in my garden. I love bee balm, and it's... Um, how they they are highly medicinal i'm trying to stop referring to plants as it and refer to them as they are beings um so yeah those are 
some of the things that I'm gonna grow. And then I got these off of a whim at Home Depot. So I got these gladiolus bulbs. I don't know if these will do good in my area, but I gave into the peer pressure and it was 10 bulb, it was eight bulbs for 5.98. I'm probably gonna go get some more. And these I wanna plant in the front yard. They're really pretty. And then I got some liatris. Yeah, li liatris. These, I believe, are a native flower. But yeah, I'm gonna plant these. They, they were 10 for 5.98 at Home, at Home Depot. Some other plants that I wanna get are, I really want some hostas in my yard. So I have, excuse me. I have a, sh a shaded part of my front yard, so it's near my door. So I want to get some hostas, some uh, spring planted hosta bulb bulbs. I have two. Um, oh, why can't I remember? Two yopon yopon hollies coming in that I'm gonna put along the back part of like that privacy fence thing that I was talking about. I have two pineapple guavas and a beauty berry on the way from So Exotic. I got a gift card for Christmas. Um, which I was really excited about. So I got that for Christmas. So I ordered those plants from So Exotic and that's S-O-W Exotic. Um, it's a nursery based in Florida. Of course, I have my apple banana in the front as well. And then my boyfriend bought me two plum trees for Christmas because he loved me. Um, so I got those. And I'm thinking about ordering another um, muscadine vine, but I don't know because I want to plant the tomatoes over there. So I'm really, I'm really trying to like hunker down on the final things that I want for the garden. Not like final as in like final, final, but just those like last foundational touches that I want to put in so that I can have the, um, they can start maturing and growing. So I have the pineapple guavas on the way. I really, really, really want two peach trees and then maybe some camellias, maybe some gardenias. And yeah, I'm just trying to figure all that out. So that's like the last swing. So next year, when around this time, I really want it to just kind of be a lot calmer and um, for most things to already be in place. So at that point, we're just doing like maintenance and just kind of like getting ready to plan our annuals. But I really want my perennial trees and plants in place so they can start doing their thing and establishing themselves and yeah yeah so <laughs> that's all today thank you for watching if you still are i hope this gets you excited about your seeds um what are y'all growing what are you excited about this year what are you dreaming about for your spring garden i am very interested to know let me know in the comments down below and see y'all next time thanks for watching bye